Over the last half century, mankind has increasingly been expanding into space. However, a hidden danger lurks in the darkness, and it causes the materials to degrade over time, leading to an inevitable death of the expensive hardware. Hello space enthusiasts! Yes, in this episode I am finally going to shoot with a real ion gun. You are watching Captain Corrosion and in this video you will learn how charged particles contribute to the corrosion of materials in space. My name is Maido and I am a material scientist specialized in corrosion, nanotechnology and materials characterization. So let's get started. Space is full of charged particles and the damage they do to different materials depends of course on the type of the material but also on the mass, charge, velocity and the type of the particle. The main reason why charged particles actually do more damage than neutral particles is due to the nature of their interaction with matter. Namely, neutral particles such as neutrons can easily pass through the matter as they can only directly interact with the nuclei. Charged particles on the other hand can interact from a distance both with the positive nuclei but also with the surrounding cloud of negative electrons. So the energy of the particles is quickly dissipated in the first top layers of the material. A particle with same mass and velocity but a higher charge is therefore capable of doing more damage. When we take a closer look at the cosmic radiation, we actually see that most of the particles are protons, alpha particles, heavier ions and electrons. Fast moving heavier particles such as ions obviously do more damage than lighter particles like electrons. That's why we can use accelerated electrons in a scanning electron microscope to create amazing images of the nanoscaled world without causing much damage to the substrates. However, in space there is also a small amount of stable antimatter particles such as positrons or antiprotons and if they hit regular matter then the particles cancel each other out and a huge amount of energy is released as a form of electromagnetic radiation. The high energy of this radiation is capable of ionizing the surrounding matter which means that the nuclei are stripped from electrons, resulting in a degradation of the material's properties. The dependence of damage to the material on the velocity of the particles is actually quite easy to understand, so let me just demonstrate it with these lead pellets. As you can see, low-speed pellets hardly have any effect. Now, if I increase the speed of the same pellet, its kinetic energy is also increased and therefore it does much more damage. In space, however, there is also a really small amount of extremely fast-moving ultra-high energy particles that have over 40 million times more energy than the accelerated particles in the Large Hadron Collider. Such ridiculous energies can only be applied to a particle at supermassive black holes found at the heart of galaxies. The highest energy particles may actually be iron nuclei and it can hit you with the force of a 142 gram baseball traveling at 100 km per hour. The odds of getting hit by such a particle are pretty low however and there are many other things that can go wrong in space. Now at the start of the video I promised to shoot with an iron gun and hell it's about time. So this is the ion gun attached to a very powerful scanning electron microscope which means that we can actually observe at a nanoscale how a real material is being eaten away by energetic gallium ions. For this experiment I have chosen a piece of aluminium alloy 2024 which contains about 5% copper and is used in automobile and aircraft industries. So let me briefly explain the setup of this experiment. As you can see, our sample is attached to a special holder and we will be bombarding it with ions that come from uh, this column over here. 
and afterwards we will be making photographs of the crater with the help of electrons that come from this column over here. When we take a closer look at the microstructure of this alloy, we can see that in some regions we have a higher content of copper, while the surrounding areas have more aluminium. So let's see what happens if we bombard this area with gallium ions. The ions will do most damage to the alloy if they can hit it from a 90 degree angle, so I need to tilt the sample. As you can see, the accelerated ions did terrible damage to the material and the rate of erosion actually depends on the atomic number of the material. So in the regions where we had mostly copper, which is a higher atomic number element, the erosion was much slower than in the surrounding areas where we had mostly aluminium. Come on, did you really think I would power up this expensive ion gun just to erode the material surface? This beauty can do much more, so let's have some fun with it. So this is what we got. The main reason why I did this experiment was to show you that the damage done to a material also depends on the amount of charged particles that interact with its surface. So basically if we have more particles bombarding the surface then we also have more damage done to the material. This is the basics of this type of corrosion, so thank you for watching. If you want to see more similar videos in the future, then click on the subscribe button over here and check out the Captain Corrosion YouTube channel. Also, be sure to see the video's description for additional information and put your thoughts and questions in the comment section below.